You know, I have covered many times on this program the fact, and it is indeed a fact, that individuals uh, that are approaching retirement and are in retirement spend less money. And as a result, I have discredited many of these retirement calculators that automatically compound your spending at 3 or 4% each year for inflation. Not because I don't believe that there's retiree inflation, because there is. That is a fact. That's a proven fact. And retiree inflation, as measured by the CPI-E for, well, they call it for the elderly, but it's for the experimental. It's an experimental rate. But it just basically proves out that in retirement, your costs, because of housing and health care primarily, uh, go up at a, more, at a faster clip than uh, pre-retirement. But the mere fact that you spend less money offsets those increases. And that true, that is also true. And Steve Vernon wrote about this. Here's what he found, or at least the researchers found, that at the end of 2016, annualized spending by consumers age 55 and over dropped by 2.9%. A significant reversal from back in 2013 when it actually increased by 2%. So in a fairly short period of time, And I don't necessarily know why. I don't think they know why either. But I think it has something to do with the fact that 10,000 people are retiring on a daily basis. And once you hit retirement, in particular, if you're on a fixed income or you're spending your own money, it's like the study I'll talk about next hour that says if you spend your credit card money, you spend 18 percent more than if you spend cash. Well, the same thing is sort of true, I think, or at least you can relate to that when you're in retirement. If you're getting a paycheck, a regular paycheck each and every month, uh, then you tend to spend more than when you're dipping into whatever you've saved up. And uh, since I've been experimenting with spending cash, I can say not anecdotally, but in reality, I spend a lot less when I'm whipping out cash than when I'm whipping out my credit card. And I mean, the beneficiary might be Jeannie and I. Uh, The loser on that may be the tip that I give at the restaurant. Maybe instead of 30%, I give 18 or whatever. Uh, In either event, Gene Pastool is a certified financial planner. And Gene, what I haven't talked about necessarily is what that impact may be. Assuming it's all true, and I, I know that it is factually true, that as people age, they spend in nominal terms less money. Uh, And and that's backed up by uh, all kinds of data, by the way, about two and a half percent per year less, according to according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and so forth. But uh, we haven't really addressed that from the standpoint of stock market returns and so forth. What's your take on that as a CFP? Well, the, the, the interesting thing is to, is to look at, especially as you're, as you're aging, as the individual is aging, that you're right. I mean, I, I haven't bought a new suit in, you know, in like Shows, four, by the way. <laughs> four or five years. Um, uh, but you're the only one that does because look at, you know, I mean, who can keep it's hard, up with, it's hard who to can look keep this, up with that hard to look I mean, this good. certainly yeah. <laughs> no wonder you get up at three in the morning i do uh, anyway anyway but you do i mean it's it's the inflation that that seniors for example the experience uh is is a lot in different than what a younger person does because most of the things that a younger person uh, is paying for uh, or buying that the the person who's retired and, and living in the last part of his life is not is not uh, doing that but his medication bills go up his, you know his doctor bills go up and 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 the like so that's a that's an important thing in any event uh, so the the idea is to look at where your where your fixed expenses are, where the where the where the money that, that the, the expenses that are never going to change, at least never going to go down, most likely could go up. Might if you're renting, you know your expense of renting is going to go up unless you move. If you're uh, you know you have uh, utilities, they are always going up, etc. But to but to be able to find a way to cover the basics of your uh, uh, of your expenses, uh, of, of your, your cost of living. And, uh, and then you can apply a portfolio to that 
that uh, uh, you know stock portfolio and the like that can help with the increases and you have more control over it. Uh, but if you're, you know, if you're if you're just got this pile of money there and you're trying to figure out every year or every every month what percentage of that you can take. You drive yourself crazy. This fellow Steve Vernon, the actuary that I was talking about, has written about this, and I don't have time to get into everything that he said, but I, I believe that he's in your camp, the safety first camp. Remember, folks, I've talked about the safety first approach, which I'm also in favor of, versus the probability based approach. And what comes to mind uh, usually is this whole idea of annuities, which Gene is an expert in, and the fellow that's on TV that says, I'll never buy an annuity, I'll never sell an annuity, I hate annuities, that guy, you know, he's a billionaire money manager. And I was just relating this during the break, you and I talked about this. If a person buys a life annuity, they might pay a one-time fee to a broker or whatever, or what is it, like 3% or something like that, right? Actually, the insurance company will pay the fee. The insurance company will yeah. pay it. But they get a lifetime income, and Steve Vernon, the actuary who does these calculations for a living, said that's actually something you should do. Cover your essential expenses with guaranteed income from Social Security, pensions, and annuities and then do the stock diversified portfolio thing, the probability-based side with your portfolio to cover the non-essential costs. Yeah, Explain I, why that's just, a good thing. Well, I just read that guy's, uh, you know, his brochure or pamphlet. He, uh, he sent it oh, to Oh, that me guy the, that's on TV. Yeah, that guy, yeah. And, and I read the thing and uh, all about how bad annuities are. And, uh, and, and item by item by item by item through the entire thing, he referred to what would be the worst possible product that one could buy, you know? Uh, and, and in fact, none of that would be true if, you know, if you're actually looking and say, well, I don't want this to be true, no problem. We, you know, we can do that here. I don't want this to be true. And you just, and, and there's tons of annuities that, you, that would be picked that would alleviate all of that. So. What was your question? Well, I did, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I was just talking about the sp spending and retirees and the fact that yeah. there's this probability based thing. And then there's this thing, you know, called safety yeah. first. And for those of us that have had real life experiences where people sit down with you, not as a money manager, but people sit down and say, you know what? I don't want to be eating dog food if I ever do make it to 90. Yeah. Then you have to go with a safety first approach because you don't know what's going to happen and my point was if older americans and were dominated by this baby boom population if indeed they're going to be spending two and a half percent less which the academic studies tell us they do then what how do what does that portend for the stock market going forward i don't know the answer to that but stick around with mr pastula because i do want to give him a compliment because he was 25, 30, maybe 40 years ahead of his time. I'll explain why when we come back. He's a smart guy. You ought to talk to him sometime. Go to safemoneymonitor.com or give him a call at 800-809-6783. He'll help you make much, much better money moves. safemoneymonitor.com.